everyone. Uh, <laughs> let me start by trying to figure out who's my audience. So if you have ever written code in your life, please raise your hand. OK, so please keep your hand raised. And if, for the rest of you, if you work directly with someone who writes code, please also raise your hand. OK, so I think that's most of you. Um, so software engineering is fun. It's, it's something that I enjoy and something that I've enjoyed for a really, uh, long, long, really long part of my life. Um, I was introduced to computers pretty early on. Um, even before I went to school, I remember going to my father's office and sitting plopping right in front of a computer and playing games on it. And these days, people didn't really have computers at home. Um, so that was the only moment where I could en enjoy the computer time. And when the, ti and when the time would be over, I would awa await the next time. And eventually, we got a computer at home too. And I would spend hours and hours in front of it. Um, uh, at first, it was just computer games. Then it was the internet. And eventually, it was writing code. And, <coughs> and I enjoyed the time in front, of in, in front of the computer so much. When it came time for me to decide what should I study? It didn't, it, software engineering did not come into my mind. I thought that I need to study something serious, like finance or law, the serious stuff, right? And I was enjoying software engineering, sitting, sitting in front of the computer so much that it didn't cross my mind that that's something that I could do for the rest of my life. Eventually, it did come to me that Wait, wait, wait a second. Just wait. People will pay me for writing code. I can sit in front of a computer for the whole day, and I will get money for it. That is that that is a viable option, really. Um, so that's what I decided to do. I got into studying software engineering, and eventually I ended up at Vinted. Uh, that's, that's a photo of me working. <laughs> we do a lot of work at Vinted. Uh, and engineering at work is not always fun. Like, even at Vinted. Even at Vinted, there are moments when you, de when you need to do something boring, for example. You need to solve a problem that you solved many times before. Or you need to create a feature uh, that you don't really believe in, but everyone else does. So you do it. But software engineering, for me, is always fun at home. Yes, even when I get home after a long day at, at Vinted office, I sometimes flop into, in front of a computer and continue writing code. And the difference there is that at home, I'm the one who decides what I do. I'm the boss, no, no one else. And I can even decide to, to do something else and not software engineering. I can decide to play some retro games like Vampire, uh, Castlevania Bloodlines. Or, and that was a lot of fun. And, or I can decide to play something like Final Fantasy IX. And, final, and trust me, Final Fantasy IX is amazing. I've spent hundreds, uh, hundreds of hours playing Final Fantasy IX in my life so far. And I will probably spend hundreds of hours more. The, there's even Final Fantasy IX on iOS right now. It came out earlier this year, and I still have not installed it, because I'm afraid of what it will do to my productivity. I can only imagine uh, my co-workers co finding me hunched over in a corner with my iPhone playing Final Fantasy IX and asking me, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so when I do software engineering at home, it has to be more fun than Final Fantasy IX. That's the rule. 
So what makes uh, software engineering fun at home? What kind of decisions do I make that make it fun for me? Part of it is, part of it is technologies that I choose to use. So what technologies do I use when I write a project at home? Do I use PHP and PostgreSQL? Solid technologies, right? Solid, long-lived, great, also boring. Uh, do I use Ruby Rails, MySQL, and Backbone? That, that is the part of the technology stack that we use at Vinted. I've spent years using it, so boring also too. Um, do I use Elixir, Phoenix, or ThingDB, and React? These are the hot new technologies. Everyone is talking about Elixir, Phoenix, or ThingDB, and React. Do I use these? Of course I do. Of course. <laughs> right? Even the names of these technologies are more exciting than the other ones, right? What is more exciting to you, like PHP or Phoenix? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> or RethinkDB. Like, it's a database that has refunct databases. Like, oh, 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 an outrageous name, also exciting. Um, I can, uh, so I can be a magpie. And Mag magpie is this creature that's attracted to the, shi to, to the shiny stuff. Uh, I'm also like that. I'm attracted to the shiny and new. I like to try out new technologies and play with them and tinker with them. And that's engineering for engineering's sake. Yes, I'm working on a project, but I'm also trying out new tech, uh, writing code in a new way, and just doing it to do engineering. And I think that no matter if you're an engineer or you're not even in, in this industry, we all, we all like to try out new stuff, new tech, new processes, new tools. And we, br we bring that magpie man mindset to work. And I know that I did that. So in mm -hmm. my first job, we had, this pro we had this new project, and we needed to decide what will we use. And there was the, our, choices, our choices then were ASP.NET Web Forms or ASP.NET MVC. And, what, and it was 2007, before ASP.NET MVC become, became this hot new thing. And somehow, I still managed to convince everyone that we should use this hot new technology. Is there anyone from Adform in the audience? <laughs> so, at my previous job, at Adform, <laughs> I convinced the whole company to start switching from SVN to Git. Uh, I was using Git at home. Uh, at that time, Atom was using SVN, and I was really excited about Git. That was, that, that was, that was what was everyone was talking about. And that was what everyone was excited about. And, it's, and I still believe that it's better than SVN, but the reasons uh, I moved everyone to be, also be excited about it was not because it was better, it, because it, was, it, it was because it was more exciting. And there's a difference. So my question today is, how do you think about engineering? Because my mindset has changed. Uh, I don't think the way that I used to think. I, at work, I, may, I, I don't make decisions like a magpie. Let me tell you another a, a story from Vinted's life. I call that story Ready Sync Feed. It was uh, 2013, and there was this company that had a peer-to-peer -peer social marketplace, and they wanted to build a feed. And that company was, of course, Vinted. <laughs> and a feed, you probably encounter a feed every day, uh, either on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. 
It's uh, the newest relevant stuff from your friends, co-workers, or, or just people that you follow. Since Vinted has a social aspect, we wanted uh, to build something similar. We had these requirements. We wanted that people in their feeds would see pics uh, made by community moderators. Uh, they would see content from, bra from brands and people that they follow. And we also wanted to show suggestions for you to follow brands or other people. And we set, our, our engineering team sat down and started working on it. So how do we build a feed? Hmm. Hmm. And most of the things were clear. We looked at what other companies have done with building feeds. Uh, but there was this one key decision that we uh, were kind of undecided about. It was, and it was, where do we store the feed? And we decided that Redis is a perfect fit. Redis is the right tool for the job. And Redis has the sorted sets feature. And feed is basically a sorted set of things. So it was you know, perfect. Redis was perfect. And in our toolbox, in our stack already, we had MySQL and Memcached. And we looked at that. And we asked ourselves, does it make sense to also add Redis here? Yeah, yeah, it does. So we got to working. And three months later, we built a feed. And members are happy, right? We released the feed, uh, A-B tested it, and it performed quite well. And what about engineers? Engineers got to build the, got to build this exciting, challenging feature. And they also got to work on this n newer, exciting technology. So they're happy too, right? Well, not really, because this is what happens. This is what happened. Uh, right after we finished building uh, feed, uh, there w we had this uh, issue posted about feed technical depth. Um, Oops. And while the issue is called feed technical depth, it, it might as well be called Redis technical depth. Because this is the choice that created all that depth. And if you would look at the list of all the problems, all the problems are related to, to our choice of Redis. And this issue was posted in March 2014. Again, we started building the feed in late 2013. In March 2014, this issue was posted. And we only finished uh, solving all the, all the problems that were created by this choice of Redis in September 2015. So like, while we think that it only took us three months to build uh, the feed, it actually kind of took us two years. Uh, let me share you a related story. Let me share with you a related story. It was 2010, and there, wa there was the, this company that was a peer-to-peer -peer social marketplace that also wanted to build a feed. And this company was Etsy. And their, requ their requirements were kind of similar. And they also started thinking, hmm, how do we build it? Hmm, how? And they looked at Redis. And for them also, um, you can read it about, it, about that on their blog, Redis also seemed like, like a perfect fit. And their technology stack was also similar to ours. They were also using MySQL and Memcache for storage. And they looked at that and think about, thought about it, and does it make sense to add Redis here? Nope. They, they, they arrived to a different conclusion. Instead, they just chose to use Memcached. They chose the thing that they already had in their, in, in, in their toolbox. 
and they worked on building the feed. They completed building the feed. They released the feed. Members are happy, etc. And what about engineers? What about their engineers? Their engineers just moved on to working on other stuff. So I don't. So let's compare these two situations. Let's compare these two two choices. The, the requirements were similar, but we arrived to a different conclusion. And I'm not saying that there are absolute answers here. I'm not saying that we were right or Etsy was right or, or anything like that. But I think that the lessons that can be gleaned for, from, the, from these stories uh, can be applied to how we think about engineering. I, I divide those lessons into two parts. Uh, shininess and stack. So, re out of these two, Redis is the more, the more exciting one. Redis was released in 2009, and Memcached is like 10 years old, 10 years old by 2000 and 2013. And with, with this newness, with this shininess, comes, comes a few things. Uh, the, the first point of comparison is tools. Mem uh, <coughs> technology that, technology that's, that has been uh, around for a while has a lot, a, lot of, a lot of more tools available for it. it also ha there's also a lot more information available, available about it. And by information, I don't mean just documentation. I mean stuff uh, like that you might not even think about. There's this Socratic paradox. I know that I know nothing. Uh, in my childhood, my father used to say it in a slightly different way. He used to say, you, you don't know what you don't know. And with new, shiny, and exciting technology, uh, it, it, it is very true. Uh, you might, with new technology, you might encounter situations that you could not even think about, that that would not even come to your mind, even you, if you sat down and tried to consider everything. And when that happens, you go on Google or on Stack Overflow, you look for a solution, and you find nothing, and you need you need to figure it out on your own. When we think about new languages, new technologies, etc. We only see the trend, right? Uh, there's this language created by Rob Pike at Google called Golang, or just Go. And it's trending upwards, right? Going up. So that means it's good, right? Right? Uh, or there's this other language, Ruby, that we use, and it's Staying about the same, right? Neither growing nor becoming less popular. Or there's PHP. It's trending downwards. That means it's bad, right? Right? And what we miss in this case is the context. Because this is the context. PHP is still more popular than the other two. And Go does not even register on this scale. Yes, it's trending upwards, but it's, it's, it's nowhere yet. And in, instead of uh, taking and trying to adopt these new technologies, we, sh we, should let other just, we, should, we should just let other companies figure it out. Companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon, they, they actually need to build a new technology to solve their problems. Because at their scale, their, their, their problems are kind of different than ours. So that was about shininess. And let's talk about what I call stack. So Redis was new to our stack. Memcached wasn't. And with stuff being new to our toolbox or our stack, there also come, 
comes a few differences. First of them is knowledge. We had, we had knowledge about how memcached works. Most of the people at Vinted did. And some people uh, had knowledge about Redis. But even so, everyone else had to also learn ab about it. Another, another thing is just mental overhead. When you add more, more tools and technologies to our, to your stack, you, cr you end up in situations when you look at your toolbox and you have to, f and you think to yourself, huh, which, which of these should I use again? Let's discuss. Let's spend a week discussing <laughs> which should we use. That, that's, that's very productive. And there's also this thing that we also tend to forget called operations. Making Redis highly available was part of that. And we only managed to do, the, to do it two years after we decided to build feed. And under this operations name uh, lay things like monitoring, logging, deployment, etc. And we tend to forget about the, these long-term costs when we add new tech or new tools to our toolbox. And actually, at one point, we thought about building Feed 2.0, a better version of Feed. We didn't go through it, but we sat down we, and we tried to figure it out, how would we do it? Hmm, how would we do feed now in a better way, in a more personalized way? And we uh, created this diagram, and we didn't use Redis. So if we would have went through it, read the introduction of Redis to our stack would have been for naught. It wouldn't have been useless. So don't add more tools or technologies to your toolbox unless, unless, unless you really, 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 really need it. Because with, this, with these additions comes co come costs that you might not have thought about. At, at the start of that talk, I said that engineering is fun. And it is. Engineering is a lot of fun for me. But there's also another thing that is fun, and that is shipping. Shipping stuff to our members. Getting something exciting into their hands. And actually, it's, it's more fun than engineering. It is. Um, and when I engineer at home, uh, I, I, the most fun and exciting experience uh, is, is not connected with me using the most new and shiny and exciting technology. Uh, I have this open source project called Pronto, and one of the most exciting moments uh, from working on something on my own time came when I learned that some engineer in Japan made a presentation about Pronto. And I, when I learned that, I, I was just jumping up and down for five minutes. Engineering is fun, but <laughs> shipping stuff that, that is exciting and that matters is even more fun. I don't, want, I don't want to build bridges like that. I, I, don't, I don't even understand what this bridge does. Like, there's, there, there, there is no river here. Uh, the goal is not exciting technology. Earlier in my life, it kind of was, but now it isn't. The goal is, is building something exciting. Uh, the goal is not to use some shiny new technology to attract engineers. I see that companies do that. They pick tools that they think will attract the talent. 
and the goal is not the right tool for the job. It's, it's, it's a correct phrase, the right tool for the job. But, it's, but I, I, I learned to hate it right now because it's been so overused. The right, when, when, when people tend to say the right tool for the job, now they tend to mean not the right tool for the job, they mean the ideal tool for the job. Let's sit down for a week and figure out the ideal, perfect, shiny new tool for the job. And obviously, the goal is not engineering for engineering's sake. And I think that most of you will agree with that. But we, we fail to recognize when we would do engineering for engineering's sake. I think that if you would ask all the engineers, they would say, yes, we don't want to do engineering for engineering's sake. But they would, but a, a lot of them would still make decisions in a way that fails to recognize when we do engineering for engineering's sake. Oh, from, from this talk, I want you to take two things. One of them is use boring technology, code, engineering, etc. Boring works. Uh, I know it's not exciting, but it does. And it helps you to ship something exciting. And another thing is optimize company-wide. Don't just think about what would be the perfect way to solve this problem. Redis would be perfect, but let's pick something that would be the best for the whole company instead. Let's pick something that we already have in our toolbox. There's this, another example from Vinted's life. When we thought about building analytics, uh, we already have t uh, tons and tons of data. And everyone is talking about big data this, big data that, Hadoop this, Hadoop that. But we decided, uh, let's, let's not use that. Let's, let's do it the simple way. Let's, let's make do with what we already have. Let's just replicate MySQL and write simple SQL queries to analyze our data. And that worked for a really, really long while. And saved us a lot of costs that, came, that come with trying to learn Hadoop and the whole big data stuff. So, I, so let's not do engineering for engineering's sake. Let's learn to recognize that by thinking about boring stuff, boring technology, boring code first, and Let's optimize company-wide to ship exciting stuff. Thank you.